Well, I thought it would be interesting to compare the two ways of stretching a drum loop here, using elastic versus using the regular time compressor expander. And so this is my old friend, the drum loop, by the way. So we know from before that this is a 100 beats a minute. Now, it's not exactly 100 beats a minute. If you look over here at the end of bar three, well, it's pretty close. But just to be sure, I'm going to take my time compressor trimmer and snap this guy to bar three. Okay, I probably didn't make an appreciable change, but I just want to be sure that he's exactly lined up with bar three. So, yeah, actually, he didn't create a new Tish file, so I guess he was happy with where bar three was. I don't know, it was looking a little off to me, but now we're good. So, let's say we want to take this 100 beat a minute loop and have it be, oh, I don't know, pick a number, 110 beats a minute. So now we know that if we press our time compressor trimmer and we snap it over to this new bar three, where the new bar three is at 110 beats a minute, then we get a new. Oh, you know what? My clock ticking is still ticking down here and it's not at 110 beats a minute, so. Okay. So that's our new Tish file at 110 beats a minute. So if I create a new track, let me do this. Let me just hide. I don't think we need the transport anymore. I'm going to reach over here and grab old Beat Detective, the not Tished one. This one. And don't really want that trimmer. I'll move him over here. And let's put him on top so we know which one we're working with. So here's the old guy at 100 beats a minute. And let's try our system now. Let me see if I can give myself more workspace here. That looks pretty good. Let's try elastic audio on this loop. And we'll just mute our time compressed one for a moment. And let's see. Analysis and warp are grayed out. I haven't applied it yet, so now I have applied it. Let's make it rhythmic. And the little task guy pops up, fine. Let's go to analysis and see where it put things, okay? So there's a few things to clean up here, I think. I will remove some of these markers that I don't think are exactly where I want them to be. Likewise on this guy and this guy, that guy, him, him, him. So it's possible that these triggers might have been different had I used polyphonic. I'm just trying to get the big beats here. I think that should do well. Okay, so that's good enough. Now, I want to telescope this, but I'm going to telescope it so that it snaps to the new tempo of 110. My new bar three is there. So I'm just going to go to warp. And then I'm going to grab this guy and keep an eye on the back end here. When the back end starts to line up with bar three, there we go. And okay, it's a little wobblier in here than I expected it to be. You know, this marker is not quite as solid as this one. Okay. So I think the time compressor trimmer did a better job of snapping it to the grid than the marker telescoping elastic did on the overall length of this. Now, yeah, I could go back and wiggle my markers probably and get them to line up. But just comparing the two, I think that the overall length and having it calculate the internal stop and start marks for all these markers. I think it did a better job of snapping this to the grid of the new tempo than Elastic did. But you certainly have your choice of doing that. And if you wanted to do 
an internal slowdown or speed up, Elastic would be the way to go. Elastic Audio also has a pitch component, and we'll take a look at that in the next movie.